Welcome to the Siglent SPD3303X-E equipment review. Uh, this piece of equipment is a power supply and the wonderful thing about it is it's a three output power supply. You have three outputs that all can be enabled independently and I love glowy buttons and you can turn them all on or off from here which is nice. Okay, so Basically, why three outputs is good in today's age is that this output here is either selectable between the different logic levels or different logic families that you may want to run. And so you have three amps, 3.2 amps at a logic level, and then you have 3.2 amps here at from 0 to 30 volts, and 3.2 amps here again from 0 to 30 volts. So you have two independent 30 volt, each one of these are programmable. This one is switch selectable to each one of the, any of the logic families that you're looking for, which is nice because you don't want this programmable, you want this to be manually stuck here so you don't burn up your logic levels. So going forward what we would have is we'd have some kind of Arduino circuit running off of this and our analog instrumentation being that the, the Arduino is going to interoperate with being run off of these linear power supplies here. So and 3.2 amps is more than anything we're ever going to use in the future going forward. Um, now, there's a two different variations of the 3303. You have the E version and the non-E version. Okay, the difference is that the economical version, I'm going to call this, is a few hundred fifty dollars cheaper than the non-economical version. And the only difference really there is that the full version has one millivolt and one milliamp resolution, whereas the economy version has 10 millivolt and 10 milliamp resolution. I don't know what you would want to use this guy for. I mean, you could use it as a precision uh, voltage reference, uh, but I don't know why you wouldn't just get an arbitrary function generator which can get you millivolt resolution and a whole bunch of other features. Uh, I don't know, unless you need 3.2 amps of precision voltage, that would be the, the choice then for this. If you need some kind of voltage reference that can supply one, millivol one millivolt res resolution of up to 3.2 amps, that would be a clear choice for that. For general bench supply and just general uh, bench work, 10 milliamp and 10 millivolt resolution is more than sufficient for anything that we're going to do going forward. So just be aware of the price difference between these two. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is just do a simple no load voltage check and it's set up over here. We have our, this here, this little measurement here. We're going to use channel 2. So this is your set line here. So we've set it to output 12 volts and limit to 3 amps. Okay, so, and this is our feedback line. This shows the output it measures back is 12.01 volts and we're not drawing any power at all because we're in a no load situation right now. And so if we look at the Bobsy twins over here, the, Sig the Agilent shows 11.9996, and the Siglent shows pretty much the same answer. I mean, if I pull back, you'll see those guys are reading identically. Uh, right now, we're going to see a lot of these two Bobsy twins here running in parallel because I'm just having an awesome time running the Agilent with the Siglent side by side and pretty much getting all the same answers. It's, it gives you a good feeling about the universe when everything agrees, right? Okay, so that's the output. Now, the, so in other words, what we see here is that this guy is 10 millivolts high. And the set value is like dead on uh, balls accurate. Matter of fact, let's do this. Uh, I want to get to the channel 2. And I want to change the input by 10 millivolts. So now it should be... 10 millivolts. So, I mean, the set value is accurate on this thing to the actual millivolt, according to the Bobsy twins over there, but the uh, readback display is way off. Now, another problem with trying to use a device like this as a precision voltage reference, if you're going to draw a serious amount of current from it, okay, th these readback values are only at the terminal. So, if you have to draw current over over leads like this and you could have a voltage drop across the leads. 
So just be aware of that. If you're going to use it as a precision uh, voltage reference and you are going to draw a significant amount of current from it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to test the digital outputs and see what their voltages are. Let's turn on the voltages. And it's set now to, let's go to, let me show you the, the settings there that they have. Okay, so 2.5 volts is to the left. And Simon says 2.532 and 2.532. Okay. And let's go to the 3.3 volt setting. And 3.322 and 3.322. And let's go to the 5 volt setting and 5.037 and 5.037. Okay, so the voltages under no load conditions are good. Next, I'm gonna set up for the loaded test. We have a 15 ohm uh, 100 watt resistor here, and we're gonna actually draw some current from this thing and see how clean the voltage is when you're drawing a significant amount of current. So let me put you on pause so I can set that up. Okay, presently we have the 15 ohm resistor tied across the five volt. Uh, power supply and we're seeing no ripple. The scope is set to 10 milliseconds per division and 200 millivolts per division and there's like no ripple at all and there's very little degradation in the output voltage so now we're going to go to the linear. Now it's really not that big a deal um, digital supplies can be a little bit noisy but these are showing themselves to be very clean and so now we're going to switch to the linear. Okay, now we're on the 12 volt output and it is showing a point, almost a 0.8 amp output current being drawn. And our output is set to 12 volts plus one, t one, uh, one one hundredth of a volt. And our Bobsy twins are pretty much showing that we've only drooped by, oh, three millivolts, four millivolts, not a big deal. And we're not seeing any kind of ripple on the scope. And our resistor is now starting to get a little bit warm. So now we're gonna crank this sucker up to, well, first we're gonna test the, the current limit. That's what we're gonna do here. Because we know we're drawing 0.8 amps. Let's just see if the current limit device works. So what we're gonna do is select the current limit and then we're going to drop this down to one amp and then we're going to, oops, I don't want that. Let's drop this down to nine. So I'm going to get to 0.8. It should just barely stay on. And I'm going to go to the finer digit. If I drop this by one, it should shut itself off. Oh, okay. So it's a limiting current supply. See what it says here? You got a little red light that says you're you're beyond your current limit here. Um, I always thought these things are supposed to shut off if you get beyond this. Okay, this this doesn't shut off. This just degrades the voltage. See the voltage coming down as I'm as I'm reducing the the current limit. It's reducing the voltage to drop the current. Okay, I'm, I'm used, used to these things just shutting off when they hit the current limit, but as long as it's limiting the current, that's fine. That, that's acceptable. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull one of the legs out so that we can set this up for a high current run. We're going to limit now the current to 2 amps. And then we're going to change the voltage to 30 volts. Oops. 
Okay. Now we're going to plug this in. And what should happen is it should hit the current limit and knock the current. Oh, okay, that's right. Uh, two amps is about what it should draw. Okay, so now we're drawing 60 watts. And we're only off in voltage by uh, two hundredths of a volt, which is very, very good. 20 millivolts, same as over there. And we're not seeing any ripple at all on the scope. And the resistor is starting to get warm. So all in all, I'd say this is uh, very clean. Um, I expected drawing two amps at 30 volts that I would expect to see at least a little bit of ripple over here. Maybe I need to scale this up a bit. Nope. I run 10 millivolts per division now. No, 100 millivolts per division. No, nope, it's a little spiky, but I, I think that's because I'm using the the Siglent probes here. As we found out, the Siglent probes aren't that good, so I got to go order new probes for this. And let me bring it to. So I don't seem to see any kind of ripple here. I don't want to be doing this too long because this resistor is going to heat up on me, and I don't want to start melting stuff. That looks good. I, I, that spikes there, we know those spikes are from the from the poorly shielded Siglent probes. And we can actually fix that by going to acquire and change this to eras and that'll filter some of that. Oops. And there we go, that's filtered those spikes out. So very good, it's very clean. I'm drawing two amps. I'm drawing 60 watts from one side of this power supply. And it's only off by two hundredths of a volt from the set value. Very good, it's, it's supplying the power. Let's see how hot this thing is. Yeah, it's hot, you better stop. All right, I'm, I'm very happy with this guy. So I'm gonna just turn the power off and let the resistor cool. So as a final wrap up to this guy, the only complaint I have, let me take the resistor off so I can turn it back on. The only, 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 only complaint I have is that the spacing well, let me make sure I turn the 30 volts back to 12 so I don't fry the next thing I hook to this. Yeah. Oh, I can smell the heat from the resistor. Wow, it's hot. <laughs> okay, the only thing that I have a complaint about is I like to use these guys a lot. And the spacing on the inputs aren't quite sufficient to take these. So that's the only, only, only complaint I've got. I love Siglin's layout. I love their color scheme. I like actually that this thing looks smaller. This is actually smaller in real life than it looks in its picture online. It actually looks much bigger online. So I like it's more, it's a very compact footprint. I like that it's got the three voltages. I like how clean the output voltage is, even under a significant load, it's very clean. And I like their beveled supply, and I love, of course, I like glowy buttons. So uh, th this is, uh, I'm, in fact, I'm so impressed with this power supply. I already tested this one out before, because uh, I, I like it so much, I actually bought another one, because I'm setting up two full benches of equipment uh, the main reason why is sometimes I'm in the middle of a project and I have to go check something else out real quick and it's nice to have another setup to do all that work. So all in all, this is a very, very nice supply, very good supply, and I really recommend it. Thank you much.